it's when Russia and China is going to go against America. America is going to be destroyed. I know y'all don't want to hear it because you, you don't understand. You live in a system of white supremacy that never gets their hands dirty, never tells you that they are the ones that are going to be judged. Social justice, critical race theory, white privilege, white guilt, racial identity. We don't teach that. We don't advocate that. That's not biblical. But they're going to be judged the same way everything the Bible says you show whatever the man sow it they shall he also reap you're going to pay for your crime yes you're going to pay for your crime yes they don't want to talk about it but this is the end of the book the end of the book is about settling debt settling debt forget about the color how white you are how brown or how dark or how whatever repent of your sins hallelujah. I need that. every one of you hallelujah. every one of you hallelujah. you go on twitter you go on facebook you go on any social media uh so the minute you start talking about uh who we are and, and 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 even waking up there's a bunch of trolls usually white trolls that come and tell you we don't need to worry about that and why can't we just get along they ain't telling the kkk that then i tell them that but the book is talking about this so why am i talking about it because my christ addressed it and i'm going to address it so if you have that millennial mind where we just all gotta just you don't see color well then you are truly blind you're not colorblind, you just blind. Because color is the thing that people see. You hear what I'm saying? It's, uh, the last days is all about ethnic. The Bible says that that that, that uh, nation should rise against the nation. That word nation is ethnos. Correct. Later in this video, I will take a deep dive into the origin of race, the two nations described in Genesis 25 and 27. Um, now, you're not going to hear a lot of white churches talk about this. Uh, you know, I have white brother, I have white people follow me. Yes, they follow, they call all the time, follow, and uh, they understand, they even say they know who's who, they believe it, they've been knowing it before we did, but the point is, is that they follow because they understand that, 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 that I'd rather be on the side of truth. Amen. There are some righteous whites who want to know the truth and are simply outraged when people lie to them no matter if they're black, yellow, or white. Listen, listen. Now, we have, the problem is, is that we have this millennial generation. This generation that went to school and was indoctrinated, I'm going to say it, by white supremacist thinking, to think that if we comply, we just get along, we just do what we're supposed to do, we love everybody, we don't see color, that we'll be all right. But them cats, like the 15-year-old dude that was a 4.0 student, got shot in the face by a police, doing nothing wrong, compliant, family compliant, good family. But he, but he was taught that if you just do what they say, if you just comply, not understanding that your color is the weapon. Your color is a weapon. I told you this stuff costs three hundred thirty-three dollars a gram melanin. Keep telling y'all why people coming up missing. Y'all don't get it. Your organs are important. The black man was made in the image and likeness of God, with his black woman made to please him. Okay, all the other nations are the offspring of sin. It's why they hate us so much. This is talk of people that got stung by it, know what it really is, experienced it, lived under it, and not so blind we can't see it. You there? See, we were that way too. I grew up in the eighties, and the eighties was all about you, you know everybody's one, and you know there is no color, and we believed that till we got a job. Believe it till you get a job, then you say, wait a minute, there is some color here. Are you understanding what I'm saying? The problem is your oppressor will never allow you to see it because that's the power over you. You got to understand what are country clubs, what are Masonic temples, what are this secret societies for? What is the secret they're keeping? Why do they need secrets? If it wasn't something they were trying to keep away from you. And the secret is a method of control. This is why they have secret societies. Say amen. Amen. I told you the Masonic secret was all about. Remember they said, I talked to you about the Masons and there was a secret. They said, we'll cut your tongue out, cut your throat if you tell it. What was the secret? Well, the secret was who the people of God is. That's who the people of God, they got the sword of Allah over their head. That's what the shrine symbol is, meaning that sword's hanging over your head. If you reveal the secret, you're going to get your throat cut. Exactly. Because there are billions of dollars wrapped up in the lie of who the real Semitic people are. Remember, Satan is the father of lies. Now, I could read Deuteronomy 28 and show you the condition of the people that will go into the house of bondage again in ships. I could show you, but I don't have time. But you read it on your own. And if you look at that condition, you will see this is the condition of Negroid people, especially the ones in America and the ones in Africa. You will see this condition. But it's specifically talking to the ones that were scattered. We know Judah was a tribe scattered to the four corners of the world, which is the ones that's going to be regathered. Y'all don't want the Bible because you've been taught wrong. You've been taught by white theologians that, that skipped to the end and knew what he was talking about. And knowing that what they had done, the Bible says the recompense, meaning payment for what you did. It says your children will be sold to Judah. Look, I ain't got time, but it's in there. So they skipped it in, so we have to confuse about the end. This is why, why is Jack Lay? Why is the guys that wrote Left Behind books? Where they at? Where they at? Y'all remember back in the 90s, it was all about Left Behind and Left Behind. And what they did was confuse TV and put out all these movies about the last days. That confused us. Making us think the 
the Antichrist, he'll be, you know, all different kinds of colors. Never did put the Catholic Church in it at all. I wonder why they did that. Confusion. But when you read the book and you take out all of that wrong theology, you get a clear picture. I can't express how much appreciation I have for a man of God like Stephen Darby. Okay, God rest his soul. This man taught the truth, and it's very scarce that you see men of God preaching truth like this. I pray that the Most High blesses his family, his wife as well. I pray that the Lord keeps her and keeps his children. Okay, it's very sad that he was gone too soon. Let's get into white supremacy as a package deal part two. I say the first and the thickest layer to the matrix as we know it is white supremacy. Because when it comes to these entities that represent the matrix, mainstream media, politics, the so-called American dream, education, military, the status quo, European imperialists is the common denominator here, which stirs all pots. This, of course, is the front end of the package deal I read about in Genesis 27 in part one. Again, Genesis 27 40 says Esau will live by the sword. Matthew 26 52 says if you live by the sword, you will die by the sword. Revelation 13 10 says he who led into captivity shall go into captivity. He who killed with the sword must be killed with the sword. That is a package deal. But this generation more than ever exalts material things, not realizing seed time and harvest reigns on the just and the unjust. Common grace does not beget saving grace. Satan wants you to believe that they are one and the same when it is not. 1 Thessalonians 5, 2 says, Sudden destruction when they say peace and safety. Okay, The so-called white man has always sought to somehow insulate himself and his descendants in peace and safety when he has accumulated oceans of bloodshed unlike any species in the history of mankind. This is why in Malachi chapter 1, verse 2 and 3, the Most High said, Jacob have I loved, but Esau I have hated. Esau's 4,000 year faith deficit put him and his descendants at enmity with the Most High because he sold his birthright for a morsel of food, then proceeded to live by the sword even beyond those 4,000 years for that same proverbial morsel of food, which represents the tentacles of the matrix that I described earlier. See, God is the opposite of man. He gives you the merchandise up front, but payment is due later. Just look at the parable of the man who refused to forgive a debt though he was forgiven much. Let's go to Matthew chapter 18, verse 23 through 35. Okay, verse 23, it says, Therefore, the kingdom of heaven is like a certain king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants. And when he had begun to settle accounts, one was brought to him who owed him 10,000 talents. But as he was not able to pay, his master commanded, that he be sold with his wife and children and all that he had and that payment be made. Now, keep in mind, <laughs> Isaiah 13 said their wives and children, their children will be dashed to pieces and their wives ravished. Okay, so you got to look at how the scriptures are connected together here. Verse 26, the servant Therefore fell down before him, saying, Master, have patience with me, and I will pay you all. Then the master of that servant was moved with compassion, released him, and forgave him the debt. But that servant went out and found one of his fellow servants, who owed him a hundred denarii. And he laid hands on him and took him by the throat, saying, Pay me what you owe. You know, like the IRS. 
and all these creditors. Okay. Verse 29. So his fellow servant fell down at his feet and begged him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay you all. And he would not, but went and threw him into prison till he should pay the debt. So when his fellow servants saw what had been done, they were very grieved and came and told their master all that had been done. Then his master, after he had called him, said to him, You wicked servant, I forgave you all that debt because you begged me. Should you not also have compassion on your fellow servant, just as I had pity on you? Verse 34, And his master was angry and delivered him to the torturers until he should pay all that was due to him. Don't mistake this for purgatory, okay? This is just a parable, okay? Because some people who believe in purgatory believe those who are cast into the lake of fire will someday get out, okay? And that's heresy. Wrapping up, verse 35. So my heavenly Father also will do to you if each of you from his heart does not forgive his brother his trespasses. Okay? I mean, it speaks in, from the heart. You got to remember the scripture says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Okay? So it's not just from the heart. It's also what a man does in his deeds. That's why the scriptures say, by their fruits, you will know their deeds. Okay? By their actions, what they're actually doing to persecute people who owe them a debt. Or even if they don't owe them a debt, they just want to enslave people. So let's look at the definition of talents. It says, a former weight and unit of currency used especially by the ancient Romans and Greeks. Now, isn't that ironic? Uh, Matthew 18 was talking about talents. Because remember, Christ said, render unto Caesar what is his and give unto God what belongs to him. See, Caesar's face was inscribed on the coin. Okay, so this is a parable that you really got to look deep into because he's, he, Christ in his infinite wisdom knew that the Romans would be in power for many, many centuries to come. Okay, in this parable, we find that one of the servants threw the guy in prison because he owed him money. Okay, white supremacy is a packaged deal. They put people in prison for tax evasion and even operating a drug enterprise when they're the ones who put the drugs into the communities. This law in Matthew 18 applies to your judges, your lead prosecutors, your credit bureaus, your policemen, your property owners, etc. All right. And I can go on and on with that. But let's go to Matthew chapter 7, verse 1 through 3. Okay, chapter 7, starting at verse 1. It says, Judge not that you be not judged. For with what judgment you judge, you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured back to you. Verse 3. And why do you look at the speck in your brother's eye, but do not consider the plank in your own eye? True judgment is doing what the unforgiving servant did to his fellow servant who owed him money. He executed judgment in the form of putting the man in prison. Okay, and they also laid hands on him. Okay, so in turn, his master delivered him to the torturers. Can you see how the two connected? So in these judgments, we can see an execution against their person. Just like we see in the world we live in today, when you go before a judge, it is because you owe some money and or you owe time devoted to the system because of a transgression you committed against the law. That is what it means by judge ye not, that you be not judged also. God is a judge. The so-called white man is a judge in his courts. He's a judge over the public fool system, over the Planned Parenthood clinics. But because white supremacy is an integral component to the matrix, 
their theologians make themselves Bible scholars according to the system's academic standard and paperwork because Satan can appear as an angel of light and he's also the god of this world. And they do this because their policemen execute judgment and murder the just when they are quick to pull that trigger. Okay? So we talked about this in James 5, in part 1. Because again, Esau lives by the sword. In James 5, I had read how that's tied to Matthew chapter 18, 23 through 25, and Matthew 7, 1 through 3. Okay, in James 5, 4, it says, You kept back the wages of laborers who mowed your fields. Verse 6 says, You have condemned, you have murdered the just, and he does not resist you. Okay? The police, stop resisting, stop resisting. The scripture said, no, he does not resist you, and you still murder the just. Again, this is the definition of judgment. Now you can see why they idolize the image of white Jesus to sow subliminal message into the mind of so-called blacks that God was judging them through all the exploits of slavery and the white man is the son of God, so he cannot sin. You see that? Now you got to pay for your crimes. Let's survey the scriptures, uh, Matthew 24, 43 through 44. We're going to go there real quick. Okay, verse 43. But know this, that if the master of the house had known what hour the thief would come, he would have watched and not allowed his house to be broken into. Therefore, you also be ready. For the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. So, who is the master of the house? Well, in this context, Christ continues the parable of him returning like a thief in the night. We know that Christ is not a literal thief, so he speaks from the perspective of the master who is concerned about his possessions being stolen or destroyed. Because remember, in Matthew 19, 21 and 22, Christ told the rich young ruler to sell everything he has, give it to the poor, and follow him. In Matthew 6, 19, Christ also said, do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. James chapter 5, 2 and 3 says, your riches are corrupted and your gold and silver corroded. So Christ speaks in spiritual terms regarding the spirit behind how these people acquired their riches. James 16, 19 said, The Gentiles shall come unto thee from the ends of the earth, and shall say, Surely our fathers have inherited lies, vanity, and things wherein there is no profit. So, although your money buys things now, it means nothing in the spirit realm because sin is pleasurable for a season. It is appointed unto man once to die and then to judgment. So in Matthew 6, 19, when Christ talked about treasures that are destroyed by moth and rust, he means that literally. How do I know that? Let's turn to Revelation chapter 18, verse 1 through 19. Okay, Revelation 18, starting at verse 1. It says, After these things, I saw another angel coming down from heaven having great authority, and the earth was illuminated by his glory. And he cried mightily with a loud voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and is become a dwelling place of demons, a prison for every foul spirit, and a cage for every unclean and hated bird. For all the nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth have become rich through the abundance of her luxury. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, lest you share in her sins, and lest you receive of her plagues. 
Verse 5, for her sins have reached to heaven, and God has remembered her iniquities. Render to her just as she rendered to you, and repay her double according to her works. Remember in part 1, I talked about work. Is the work for Satan, or is it for the enemy? Okay, is it satanic employment, or is it a sacrifice unto God? Okay, this saying, pay her according to her works. Continuing, in the cup which she has mixed, mix double for her. In the measure that she glorified herself and lived luxuriously, in the same measure, give her torment and sorrow. For she says in her heart, I sit as queen and am no widow and will not see sorrow. Therefore, her plagues will come in one day, death and mourning and famine, and she will be utterly burned with fire. For strong is the Lord God who judges her. Verse 9, the kings of the earth, paramount that you dive into who the kings of the earth are. Okay, the kings of the earth who have a lease agreement. Remember, I talked about lease agreement as well. The kings of the earth who committed fornication and lived luxuriously with her will weep and lament for her when they see the smoke of her burning, standing at a distance for fear of her torment, saying, Alas, alas, that great city Babylon, that mighty city, for in one hour your judgment has come. Verse 11. And the merchants of the earth will weep and mourn over her. For no one buys their merchandise anymore. Merchandise of gold and silver. Precious stones and pearls. Fine linen and purple. Silk and scarlet. Every kind of citron wood. Every kind of object of ivory. Every kind of object of the most precious wood, bronze, iron, and marble, and cinnamon, verse 13, and incense, fragrant oil, and frankincense, wine and oil, fine flour and wheat, cattle and sheep, horses and chariots, and bodies and souls of men. Okay, it's talking about your celebrities. Okay, who sell they soul. Okay, this is also a part of the merchandise of Babylon, proverbially. Okay, verse 14. The fruit that your soul longed for has gone from you, and all the things which are rich and splendid have gone from you, and you shall find them no more at all. The merchants of these things who became rich by her will stand at a distance for fear of her torment, weeping and wailing, and saying, Alas, alas, that great city that was clothed in fine linen, purple and scarlet, and adorned with gold and precious stones and pearls. Verse 17, For in one hour such great riches came to nothing. Every shipmaster, all who travel by ship, Sailors, and as many as trade on the sea, stood at a distance and cried out when they saw the smoke of her burning, saying, What is like this great city? They threw dust on their heads and cried out, weeping and wailing, and saying, Alas, alas, that great city in which all who had ships on the sea became rich by her wealth. For in one hour, she is made desolate. Okay, this is talking about the United States. It's talking about America. Okay, some of you might not want to hear that. But yes, America is in the Bible. You think that they're just going to write the name America in the Bible? No, that's why it's called Mystery Babylon. Okay, and we also see in verse 15 and verse 19, that they're weeping and wailing. Remember in James chapter 5, and also in Revelation 3, which I'll get into in part 3 of this series, but particularly in James chapter 5, it starts off saying, Come, you rich, weep and howl, weep and mourn for the miseries that are coming upon you. Okay? 
Revelation 18 is connected to James chapter 5. All right. The merchants of the earth, they cry and seeing her burning because in one hour, the most high destroys all of their wealth. Okay. Man seeks death, but in that moment, they can't find it because the most high wants them to see him destroy their monuments, their beautiful homes, their children, and he wants them to see his face while he does it. Revelation chapter 6, 16 says that they call to the mountains and the rocks, fall on us and hide us from the face of him who sits on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. So Matthew 6, 19 was a warning. James chapter 5 was a threat. And Revelation 18 is judgment. Okay? White supremacy is a packaged deal. Right now you live in luxury, but the time is soon approaching where you got to pay for your sins. You got to. Well, do so-called black people got to pay for their sins? Of course. That's why Revelation 18, 4 says, come out of her, my people, lest you receive of her plagues. The so-called black man is the biblical Israelites chosen by God. But in part one, I already explained how in Romans 11, the Most High made it clear that even the natural branches, whom are his jewels, they were not spared from his wrath. So the grafted in, who are the Gentiles, among the Gentiles is Edom. They shouldn't expect to be spared from his wrath either if they do not adhere to his statutes and commandments and ordinances. But as I stated before, all sin is not the same. Right now, as we speak, all the laws that are being passed and the evil, wicked things they do to the children, the white folks' name is on this earth's lease agreement. All right? And you're the ones who've enjoyed the luxuries of the lease thus far. The luxuries and the plagues are a packaged deal. You can't have your cake and eat it too. All right? So anyway, that concludes part two. Let me know your thoughts in the comments and enjoy the rest of your day.